you're anything like me, the idea of running absolutely sucks, even though I know it's good for me. So you're burning more calories over that sustained period of time. Running is great, but walking is like should you walk or should you run your way to 10% body fat? It's a question that I've been getting asked for a very long time and I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get down to 10% body fat. If you're anything like me, the idea of running absolutely sucks. I hate it, heart hurts, my lungs hurt. It's not something that I wanna do to be honest, even though I know it's good for me and I've played football all my life. And a lot of you, on your quest to get down to 10 or 15% body fat, think that you need to be running on the treadmill every day or doing 5Ks or 10Ks. And that is just simply not true. And I'm going to show you why you can just walk, to be honest. So I want you to think of it like this. Running is great, but walking is like a slow burning fire. It's sustainable and it doesn't leave you burnt out. You can keep adding to it and it's something you can do consistently over time. It's more realistic for someone that works a busy job, nine to five, gets out about in a day to actually incorporate more walking during the day rather than running. You're not always going to have the time to do 5Ks, 10Ks, but if you just change your habits, you'll be able to incorporate running throughout the day. For example, rather than getting the elevator, you take the stairs. Rather than driving, you walk to the shops. Little things like that are easy to incorporate, but you might not always be able to incorporate a five or 10K run, which then means that walking is a lot more sustainable and it's something you can do a lot more consistently over time. And you know what they say, slow and steady wins the race. Now, here's another issue with running. If you're anything like me, I've had a ton of knee injuries. My joints are like a good cookie crumble. <laughs> Anytime I hit the pavement, I do get some bad knees and bad ankles. So my opinion is walking is obviously a lot more joint friendly. And especially for my elder folks here, you probably don't have the capacity to be pounding the pavement every single day week. Getting a walk-in is a lot more joint friendly and therefore more sustainable so you can do it over a longer period of time. And don't get it twisted, just because you're walking, don't think that your heart rate isn't elevated. If you do it over a long period of time, obviously your heart rate stays elevated above your standard levels, so you're burning more calories over that sustained period of time. Really, we're in that fat burning zone. So there's no reason why you can't incorporate at least 100 minutes of walking per day because 10 minutes of walking equates to roughly 1,000 steps. And for me, the most important part of this process is, well, walking will help you preserve your muscle mass because doing too much cardio can be catabolic. And what that means is basically, you're eating away at your own muscle mass. Look at your favorite marathon runners or 10K runners. People like Mo Farah. Don't you notice their body types? Very, very skinny, very low body fat, but also very low muscle mass. It's not the look that most of us are going for, especially those of us trying to be athletic. That's because too much running literally eats away at your muscle mass and you don't really want that. So am I saying never to run? Mm, not really. But am I saying you need to run to lose body fat? Mm, no, not really. So if you was hitting 10K steps a day, you'd easily hit your target alongside a calorie deficit, of course. But if you wanna know a little bit more about how to incorporate calorie deficit in your busy lifestyle, all you need to do is watch this video right here. And that will show you exactly how to get to 10% body fat and be happy with the body that you now have. Peace.